guys, what's up? I just got out of seeing this beautiful, beautiful man give me the movie of the year. Yeah, movie of the year, right? Yeah, uh, uh, honestly. I have not been that kind of blown away in a movie. And honestly, I think since probably Endgame. Like, I haven't been wowed by a movie like that since then. Since Endgame. Since Endgame. Three hour movie. Three hours. Felt like two. No. None of you were wrong about this movie. None of you. This no. is awesome. Movie of the year. Holy shit. Like, yes. Since, holy shit. Here's the full review. <laughs> So yeah, instant reactions leaving the cinema as opposed to just a normal cold open. Uh, let me know if you guys prefer this down in the comments section below. That was a lot of fun to do. Shout out to my buddy Cisco from the Spoken Misc podcast over on Spotify. Go give him a look. Those of you who have been following me for a long time, you already know that Matt Reeves' The Batman was my most anticipated film going into the year 2022. And lo and behold, oh my god, we have a lot to discuss, but... Fear not, this is going to be completely spoiler free. I will be doing a live stream a little bit later on in the month to go into further details that I really want to talk about right now. But for right now, if you haven't seen the film, you're safe with me. As I've mentioned, this was of course directed by Matt Reeves and we follow a younger Batman played by Robert Pattinson who's only about two years into the job. He's venturing into Gotham City's underworld when a sadistic killer known as the Riddler leaves behind a trail of cryptic clues. And as the evidence begins to lead closer to home and the scale of the perpetrator's plans become clear, he must forge new relationships, unmask the culprit, and bring justice to the abuse of power and corruption that has long plagued the metropolis. The reason why this movie was my number one isn't necessarily just because Batman is my favorite comic book hero and all that. That was certainly a big factor, but it was also because of Matt Reeves' involvement. He has not made a single bad film throughout his entire career. War for the Planet of the Apes specifically I consider a masterpiece. Dawn is fantastic as well, but it's war that I really think examines the characters in a whole new light that we had never seen before. And let me tell you, if War for the Planet of the Apes was his masterpiece, the Batman is his f***ing magnum opus. He directs this movie like he's running out of time, like his life depends on it. This is really what I wanted a Batman movie to be for the longest time. A noir-style mystery. A detective film. A lot of Fincher elements in there. It reminded me a lot of Seven, actually. That was mainly in the dynamic between Batman himself, along with Jeffrey Wright, who is brilliant as Commissioner Gordon, by the way. It really does feel like a Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman-style relationship. You know, solving crimes together and whatnot. Him throwing up the bat symbol into the air because he needs help. It just, it feels very reminiscent of a Fincher film to me. I don't know. But all the better for it. And this is a Matt Reeves production all the way to the very, very brim. He, again, he directs this action even. It's so meticulous, and the crafting of it is just absolutely breathtaking. I was riveted from the very beginning. And it's just the way he interprets certain characters, like Batman himself, which I'll just go ahead and address right now. Robert Pattinson, I don't want to hear any detractors saying that this is a poor casting choice right now because you guys should all go watch this movie. A lot of you are Batman fans anyway, so you were probably going to go and see it regardless of what I may think of Robert Pattinson, and I love the man, but any detractors of his, it's all over. He's f***ing phenomenal. And he plays Bruce Wayne and Batman equally as well as the other. I think he certainly tops Christian Bale's installment for sure. And it's all in the way he presents himself and the way he embodies this character. Even when he's not in the Batsuit, his posture, just the way he differentiates between Bruce Wayne and Batman, the whole arc he has to explore, why he's being Batman at this point in his life, because he's still very young. He's still not fully understanding why he's doing the things he's doing. Once he figures it out, and it's not like it's a story you've never seen before, even though it's not an origin story, he's already Batman when we meet him here. It's so brilliant. And again, it's stuff that I really want to dig deeper into with the spoiler stream, but stay tuned for that and we'll discuss it even more. I will tell you that Batman's introduction scene, certainly way above Michael Keaton's introduction as Batman, as fun as Christian Bale's first sequence in the Batsuit was in Batman Begins, why? Robert Pattinson's introduction as Batman is above all the others. 
It's not even close. And I mean, you've seen it in the trailer. I am vengeance and all that nonsense. He's beating the shit out of a poor bloke in the subway station. The thing that you'll notice is that Batman is coming out of the shadows and you don't necessarily see him until he decides to show himself. That really adds to the aura and the mystique of the character that was missing for such a long time. And damn it, Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson put this character together and pulled it off in the best possible way. This movie, typically, you'll not be hearing a lot of comedy. I'm just gonna let you know right now, you are not gonna be laughing a ton during this whole entire runtime, and it may sound like a bad thing, but... It just makes you feel so riveted and entranced into this mystery. Notice how I said the word mystery right there. That's exactly what this movie is. This is a noir detective style film in comic book clothing. And I think that is an absolutely outstanding choice. Now, granted, we have seen Batman solving crimes and solving mysteries in some more of the animated films, like the Batman Beyond series. But we've never gotten that in a live action film like this. And um, I, I'm stunned, guys. I loved this movie so, so much. The casting, everybody is just so on point. You have Andy Serkis as Alfred Pennyworth here. So, so good as he usually is. Zoe Kravitz playing Selena Kyle here. Now, we've seen Selena Kyle portrayed through Anne Hathaway and Michelle Pfeiffer more famously, but I don't want to necessarily say that Zoe Kravitz is the best yet. I haven't seen Batman Returns in quite some time, and Michelle Pfeiffer is still peak Catwoman for me. But um, I think Zoe Kravitz does a very, very, very good job with the material she's given. This is a very, very poor character. Not too much of an upbringing here. Her suit is just... It, it's sh like, it feels very much homemade and not very advanced whatsoever. Not a whole lot of budget went into the uniform there. And lo and behold, it's a perfect fit. I mean, everybody, Pattinson, Sarsgaard, Kravitz, Circus. This is an all-star cast they've assembled to tell this story. That includes Colin Farrell, who is just... He completely transforms himself, and I realize a lot of that is due to the prosthetics he has as the Penguin, just this slimy little sidekick to Carmine Falcone, who is also played brilliantly by John Turturro, by the way. But it's not just the makeup and the prosthetics and the, his appearance, the way he looks. The voice he chooses for the Penguin, you, like, if you were to hear that voice, you would have never guessed in a million years that that was Colin Farrell. He blew me away. And he also took part in a riveting chase sequence that you saw in the trailer involving the Batmobile itself where he thinks it goes up in flames and Batman himself comes out through the smoke and you get the big title card and everything like that. It's it's so cool. And that chase sequence certainly lived up to the hype. The Batmobile itself the best it's ever looked in a Batman film, very much modernized for the 2020s. It's like there's a whole freaking rocket ship in that thing. And while I'm on the subject, Michael Giacchino's notes are prominent throughout not just that big chase sequence, but throughout the entire film. And if you don't believe me, I believe the whole score is somewhere on YouTube. But there's a reason why this guy was hired for the project. He's one of the best composers alive, and his Batman theme pitch perfect. No pun intended. But there's a reason why I wanted to save this last actor for the very end, mainly because y'all know that I've been waiting for so long to see this character done just right on the big screen. I'm of course talking about Paul Dano as the Riddler. Now listen, Jim Carrey, very, very fun in the late 90s. That was certainly more kid-oriented in Batman Forever. And we did get a good interpretation of Edward Nigma in the Gotham series, which I stopped watching around the midway point, admittedly. So I gotta certainly get back into it. But what I saw of the Riddler in Gotham itself, really, really good. Who boy, Paul Dano certainly will terrify you. He has a lot of Heath Ledger moments thrown in there with the handheld cameras and everything. But to present him as a Zodiac murderer, it's perfect. It's a perfect fit for this villain. It's a perfect way to ground this villain and bring him down to Earth. And it's a very different interpretation of the Riddler than you would expect. He's not very well put together like you would expect him to be. He's not a scientist. He didn't go to school necessarily for anything. I'm not going to go deep into spoilers again. There's so much I want to talk about with the Riddler, but... It's damn perfect. And Paul Dano's presentation as the Riddler, the voice he chooses, his inflections, I can't praise it enough. I think Robert Pattinson is going to get a lot of attention, but please do not overlook Paul Dano's performance in this. He was magnificent. And I know I said I wouldn't go too deep into spoilers, but the way they present the Riddler's clues... It never really, like I said, this is a very different interpretation than you would expect of this villain. 
but it never really loses sight of his personality. Because if you remember from the comics, the Riddler's kind of a dork. Certainly very intelligent, usually presented with glasses, which is kind of offensive as someone who does wear glasses and is nearsighted, and I'm considered a dork. Thanks. Joking aside though, the clues are all presented very uniformly in envelopes that look like this to the Batman in that same handwriting. It never changes. But inside those envelopes are a bunch of Hallmark cards with some really, really quippy lines thrown in there. And some are romantic too, which is even stranger. But again, that just makes sure you never lose sight of the Riddler and his overall personality and it still pays glowing tribute to him in the comics. Finally, we have a great version of the Riddler in a big budget Batman film. And I could go on for hours with more examples about why this movie is so damn awesome. And I'll save it all for the live stream that we'll have in a few weeks. If I were to nitpick one teeny tiny little thing, and it really is getting down to it, guys. I'm not going to downgrade the film, obviously, but I'll just let you know. There is an ending sequence that feels like a perfect button. And if the credits started rolling right there, I'd be like... Perfect. There it is. But there are two scenes attached to that button that I was just talking about, and it still works, but they certainly feel, in hindsight, thinking about them more and more like post credit scenes. And again, this is not something I'm going to dock the movie points for, because this is still my favorite movie I've seen so far this year, easily. But it's just something that I couldn't help but notice, and don't pack up too early. Definitely make sure you stay through the credits there. But guys, I clearly loved this film. I cannot recommend it enough, especially if you're a big comic book fan like me. Matt Reeves, you're the man. I cannot wait to see what else you can do with this character. I'm not implying that there will be more, but I'm hoping there is. And Robert Pattinson just proves why he's one of the strongest actors alive right now with this role. Detractors, don't say anything bad about Robert Pattinson anymore because I'm not going to hear it. <sighs> I mean, what else do you want me to say, guys? I'm going to give the Batman an A+. Plus. And God damn it, that A+, plus was well-deserved. <sighs> Man, I'm exhausted, guys. I mean, I've been going through a big shift in my life lately, and this was, I mean, just going to the theater again... <sighs> I mean, it just put me in my happy place, you know? And especially with a film as good as this, I, I can't recommend it enough, guys. I think you guys are going to absolutely dig this if you haven't seen it already. But if you guys have seen it, if you're looking forward to it, regardless, let me know what you thought down in the comments section below. Y'all know that I love creating this content, discussing all brand new things, cinema and entertainment. Getting to interact with you guys makes things all the more fun for me. If this is your first time visiting the channel today, do consider smashing that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can, along with that notification bell right next to it. That way you guys can always stay in the loop anytime there's a new upload. Stay tuned for more exciting content hitting this channel very, very soon. Next weekend's a big one with Turning Red and The Atom Project, both hitting the streaming platforms, the big ones. Certainly a lot that we can discuss, guys, but y'all are the best. Thank you all so much again for supporting me up to this point. And with all that being said, back talk, commence.